Good afternoon. Let me start with a question. How many of you like trekking, hiking in this lovely country of Switzerland? Thank you very much. So I'm not alone. And I'm sure that I'm not alone with that feeling and with that experience what I can have when I run out of food or water during a long trekking tour. And I have to reach a point until I can refill it. It is not a nice feeling. I think you agree with me. But this feeling is uncomparable with that feeling which uh, several hundred million people are experiencing day by day, month by month, or even year by year, that they don't have enough to food to, to eat. They, they don't have enough food to eat. And our presentation will address this issue, this huge problem all around the world, and mainly in developing countries. Food security is a very complex issue. You can see it from many, many different angles, and it has a global impact. Around 2 billion people are suffering from various forms of malnutrition globally. On the other side, 1.4 billion uh, has some issues with uh, overweight problems. But we will focus on that 842 million who doesn't have enough to eat, which is a 260 billion USD cost for the global society in uh, GDP terms. Who are these people? These people are living mainly in Sub-Saharan Africa, in South and Southeast Asia. They are, most of them are rural, but the urban population is growing as well. But the most important element is that two-thirds of them are farmers. They are food producers who are uh, feeling hunger because they are not able to feed themselves and their family. So during this presentation, we would like to focus how we could help them and how we could make a huge step forward in food security. There are different actors all around the world who try to address this issue from different aspects. NGOs are focusing many times on starving children. Analysts are blaming traders and speculators to increasing the prices. Governments are focusing on national level food security and they are giving subsidies to food producers. Private sector is pushing the agenda of increasing production, increasing yields. And civil society is focusing many times on having enough food to eat. We, we use the food security term uh, of the United Nations which is containing three pillars, affordability, availability, and quality and safety. And we will focus on two issues in each of the pillars, price and income in affordability, waste and logistics in availability, and contamination and nutrition in quality and safety. Let's start with price in the affordability pillar. How are the global trends influencing local food prices and local food price volatility, which is a main issue uh, for these farmers in the developing countries. On a separated local market, the prices are set practically by the local supply demand balance and the volatility of the local supply demand balance. But if you have sufficient infrastructure to connect these local markets to the global food market, then we can shift somehow these extremes. But on the other side, unfortunately, the local market will be also subject to the changing trends of the global food industry. In many cases, many analysts are saying that uh, traders are somehow making bigger volatility on these markets. And uh, there is a clear question that these traders are causing the problem or then they can be part of the solution. Based on different sources of information, 75 to 90% of the world grain trading market is controlled by these four players, the ABCDs. This is a huge number and unfortunately, the basic trends of the industry based on our analysis sh uh, shows that the direction is further consolidation. On the other side, you can see that how big regional imbalances are all around the world regarding different types of grains. So somebody has to match 
these imbalances and has to close the op uh, arbitrage opportunities. Therefore, it is a relevant question. Are the trading companies good for food security? It is hard to say a definite yes or no answer. We would rather say you. And the third very important element regarding pricing are the subsidies. Those subsidies which are given by Western countries, Western governments, to their food producing sector. They are increasing food insecurity across the globe. Unfortunately, we have to say that the answer is yes. Because on one side, they are giving subsidies to the food producers, and therefore, a lower price is enough for them to make a sufficient profit, which means an overconsumption in the Western markets. On the other side, this lower price means a lower price which can be realized in the developing markets, the farmers on the developing markets, so they can go to bankruptcy due to this fact. This is not a very nice picture, but Ashley will show you some examples how we can help these farmers to go into a better situation. Thank you. So um, we've been discussing within the framework of food security the issue of food affordability. This, we said, is a function of price of food as well as the income. So we're looking at the income of the food insecure, and primarily we want to focus on the income of farmers who, as we said, are about two-thirds of the food insecure globally. Now, farming and farmers' income is inherently volatile. Your income depends on the season, on the weather, on harvest. So the question that we want to ask is, what can companies do to help farmers manage the risks inherent to farming so that we're able to grow in this volatile industry? Traditionally, farmers have turned to their communities. They've turned to the village to support them in times of need. If their crop fails, then they can manage their firm-related or farm-related risks by turning to their neighbor. Now, this handled farm-related risks, but it doesn't handle market-related risks in farming, such as bad weather. And historically, when times like this occurred, famine was imminent. More recently, governments have been stepping in and using tax revenues or donor dollars in order to address food shortages in times of need. This is inherently inefficient and unsustainable, and there must be a better way to manage this. So I ask all of you, when you face uncertainty in your business or in your life, what do you do? I buy insurance. More and more, uh, there are opportunities for financial services and more specifically insurance in agriculture in developing countries. And this is so important because insurance can really unlock the key to productivity and decrease income volatility for farmers in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. By decreasing volatility, it allows farmers to worry less about risks of weather and take their own risks in their businesses, investing more in productive technologies, increasing efficiencies, and in the end, increasing productivity and decreasing food insecurity. So this addresses food affordability, but the next pillar is availability, which we look at as a function of quantity of food being available, as well as food being in the right location. Now, when you all heard that we were talking about food security, I imagine many of you thought it would be covering GMOs. GMOs are important. Yield is an important facet of food security, but I don't think it's the entire answer to the problem. This is because today we actually have enough food produced to feed everyone in the globe. The big issue is, is that one third of that food produced never reaches our dinner tables. And so the question isn't just how do we produce more, but how do we waste less of the food that we have? So we turn to look at food loss or food waste. Looking across the value chain or the supply chain of agriculture, there's two different ways to consider food waste and food loss. There's the loss that occurs upstream in production, handling, and storage. And then there's waste that occurs downstream. And this is at the point of sale and as well as at the consumption level. So my next question for you is, in the West, in Europe, and in the United States, where do you think most waste occurs? Downstream. Right, so a lot of the food wasted in our countries is happening down at the distribution and selling and consumption point. And so I ask you again, where do you think most food is wasted or lost in developing countries? 
upstream. This is important to consider because the focus that we wanted to take is more how do we get the food that's in the location where we need it in sub-Saharan Africa to be wasted less so it's more available in sufficient quantities for the food insecure. Luckily, there's many relatively affordable and easy to implement business solutions to these problems. First, looking at the point of production, there are easy ways to increase yields and decrease resource usage. Narika is a hybrid uh, rice that produces far higher yields, and this is a sample of irrigation that decreases costs. The next step on the value chain where you can implement new business solutions is in handling and storage. Simply using modern plastic storage containers can decrease food loss in certain instances up to 98%. Moving down to distribution and selling, by implementing modern logistics techniques, by simply changing the way that you're collecting and delivering food in developing countries, you can decrease costs of transport by 50%. In the end, this is increasing profits to farmers and decreasing the costs to consumers at the end. So in addressing affordability and availability, we're looking at three different levers that can improve incomes for farmers. The first of which is to reduce their volatility by stabilizing supply. This is through either implementing ways to increase yield through new crops and hybrids, increasing prices as a second lever. If farmers are able to store their food and wait out during the harvest season, they can wait until the prices for their crops are higher, thus increasing the prices that they fetch for their goods. And lastly, reducing costs. If we can implement modern logistics techniques and implement better transportation methods, then the costs to farmers are reduced and the end consumer can afford more food as well. So we come to our third pillar of food security, and this is quality and safety. Yes, food, if it's affordable and available, that's great. But if it doesn't contain the necessary nutrition requirements, and if it's not safe to eat, then we've lost the objective. So when I talk about food quality and food safety, I'm going to give you some examples. With regard to safety, uh, and we're going to look at an example of storage techniques. In sub-Saharan Africa, there have been cases where people are using traditional storage techniques instead of plastic to remove uh, moisture. And there are certain funguses and bacteria that grow in their grain that actually cause cancers. If you're able to just shift the storage techniques of these farmers, you can greatly reduce the instance of these diseases. With regard to nutrition, in certain countries, in sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, up to 30% of children suffer from chronic malnutrition. This causes stunting, which keeps them from reaching their, their highest optimal performance, both mentally and physically. In the long run, this greatly impacts the productivity of countries and their overall GDP. Now, the business opportunities that we see in this is mainly through public-private partnerships, many of which are happening down the road in Geneva. So companies that invest a lot in nutrition are working with uh, companies such as, or organizations such as the World Food Program and UNICEF to design different nutrient enrichment products that you can ship off during times of emergency, but also to develop into social enterprises that benefit people on the ground. So the goal that we had today was to change your perspective on food security. What we want is for you to see the face of food security not as much as starving children, but as productive farmers. We don't want you to be blaming or looking at global market conditions as an issue, but instead shifting to do something in financial services and offering insurance to farmers so that they can invest in their productivity and actually compete in these global markets. With that, looking at the, the availability of food, we don't want the focus to solely be on promoting more and more GMOs. There's so many different ways to plug up all of the loss that happens across the value chain, decreasing waste and increasing the availability of food. And lastly, to remember that it's not just about affordability and availability, but also quality and safety. So lastly, we hope you conclude that food security is not simply the business of governments and of NGOs, 
but if any of you in the audience are in the business of plastics or packaging, financial services, insurance, logistics, or transport, food security is also your business. And so we invite you to discuss more of these business opportunities with us after the break in Kasani. Thank you.